How's it going guys? Welcome back. Matt here with Code Tech and Tutorials. We're going to look at a few next things in this Unreal series and I think it makes sense to go into talking about game modes and game instances. Now you hear about game modes all the time, but game instances is something you don't really hear about till you get a little more advanced, but I think it's really important to understand the game instance early on. First let's start with the game mode. Now really all the game mode is is a set of rules for your levels or maps so you can make your own. We're going to go to our little content drawer and I've already made a game mode but for sake of example I'm going to go ahead and delete it and make a new one. Find game mode, I guess it's under blueprint, you got to make a blueprint class and there's game mode base. There's also just game mode. So the game mode base is more for local stuff and it even says right here game mode base defines the game being played, its rules, scoring, and other facets of the game type. Yeah, but if we search down here for more stuff, you see game mode base and you see game mode. So game mode is extended off the base and it has some multiplayer functionality considered. So if you're going to do multiplayer, you might want to start with that, but otherwise the base should just be fine. Right now we're really just looking at a local game. So we're just going to use game mode base. So we're just going to call this game mode 01. I'm just going to call it 01. And there we go. So you can double click this and it opens up in a little editor. You can also make these in C++ files if you want to go down that road. But we're just going to use the blueprint editor. So when you open these up, you got a viewport. There's nothing really to do with the viewport in these because uh, you, don't, you don't view them in any way. They're kind of a behind the scenes thing. So we're just going to close that. Instruction script. We're not going to worry about this too much, but this would just be like things for initializing, whatever you want. And you also have an event graph. These are for things that kind of happen uh, as you go. So there's nothing here starting out. The main thing you want to look at is over here where you have an event graph, you have functions, and you have variables. So you're probably going to end up making some variables. You're probably going to end up making some functions. But we're just going to actually leave this blank for now. Now that we've made one, we have a level here, this actual blank level that we created a while back. We can go to world settings, wherever you want to go to it. There's a bunch of different places. You're going to see a game mode override. And that we can set to our game mode 01 that we made. And it's going to have some stuff about the game mode. And it's all default right now. Like it's got default pawn, HUD, player controller, state base. So we're going to need to get used to a lot of these. The HUD generally is what you think it is. Um, obviously you can, well, I guess it's not obvious right now, but you can create HUDs from other objects and have them pop up in, in your screen. But the game mode can also control your HUD, which is handy and kind of makes sense intuitively. And same with the player controller. You probably want to set up some default controls for your, uh, for your player or whatever your level's intended to do. So you really need a bit of a plan and think about what you want to do with your level before you start building these out. But this is how you set it up. So you're also going to need to make your own custom player controller. Uh, so you can do the same thing. You make a blueprint. Look for player controller. There it is. There's one right there. We're just going to use that. And we'll just call this player controller 01. Usually people put like BP or something in the name. I don't prefer to do that just because like you can see the type. You can see it's a blueprint class. I just find it unnecessary. But you do what you want with your naming convention. It really doesn't matter that much. You just need to be consistent with your project so that if you're sharing it or working with other people, they can figure it out. So once you've made one of those, you can actually set it up here. And you can do the same with all of these. And there are some nuances to it that we're really not going to get into too much. But the main thing you need to know is that when you open these up, they all have the option to set up events, functions, and variables. So you can uh, you can do a lot of, you can store a lot of the things you want to store in these and that's how it's intended to do. So if you're wondering, hey, where do I keep track of this or that? It's often in the game mode for your level. Now, if it's something that's kind of globally across your entire game, uh, that might be a little different. That might be something like a game instance, which is what I want to talk about next, I think is very important. So a game instance, the big difference is, well, 
game instance is going to save or it's going to remain the same no matter what level you load as you load different levels or go to different maps and stuff in your game your game mode is going to like kind of reset so you'll it'll default initialize again and if you have score being kept track of in here somewhere that's going to reset every time you load a new game mode so that might not be what you want because as you go to a new level you might want to like maintain something about the world or the yeah if you're loading different maps it's you know you know what i'm saying you don't always want to reset everything so you need a place to store data where it's not just going to reset all the time even your players like your you might have a player and they might have health for example and you go to a new map and your health resets so where would you like save stuff like that and even for score well score might be local but you might have like a a tally of a total score across all levels and where would you save that it doesn't really work in the game mode because these reset all the time so that's where game instances come into play and that's why i think it's really important to learn those along with game modes and it's something that's just very commonly overlooked so let's just go ahead and make one of those you don't even see it here like don't even have it in the recommended stuff because it's a little more advanced so we're going to look up game instance and there it is and that's fine we'll just call this like core game instance so we'll we'll consider this is the main one for the entire game and this might also be where you keep track of like the player's global inventory because you know their inventory might may stay the same no matter what map they're loading and stuff like that and that's that's the big thing with these game instances and what you might end up doing let's just make a variable here called like uh, I don't know well, let's call it uh, total points or something total points is fine and we'll just make it an integer that's fine and we can give it a you got to compile we'll give it a default value so now that we have that so what you can end up doing is things like well let's go back to our game mode uh, and if you see it like this and don't have all the stuff you're expecting you got to click this open full blueprint you can say on begin get game instance i guess you don't have to do it off one of these tabs you can just do it somewhere get game instance and then you have to cast it to the one to make sure you're you have the right one cast to game instance core game instance there's the one we made so you can get your game instance however you do have to tell your main game which game instance is the one for your game because it has a default one that's just blank so where you do that and let's just dock this up here is actually in your settings and project settings this is really important and just search for game instance here it'll make it easy and here, here you have it you have a game instance class there's only one you see it's got a default we're going to change it to core game instance so now when this uh, game launches that's the one it's going to try to use which means you get what you want you get uh, whatever variables and stuff you set up for your game and as you load different levels these all stay the same so this is just kind of like a, a global you could call it like a global variable if you're thinking of code where it just stays the same across the entire runtime stays accessible rather it's something like that but now this should work this would fail if we didn't set it so if you try to do this and this like crashes or something when trying to cast to it'll just you know if it does a cast failed then that means you probably haven't set it in your in your project settings so now this should work but now since we have core game instance we can get whatever we want we can get that uh, integer total points and this will come in handy for all kinds of things you can put whatever variables you want in here you can put functions you can call functions from this and stuff too and uh, yeah you can you can do all sorts of really cool things with it but what this means now is you could say whenever your game mode loads you can just you know get your game instance and pull variables that way it can anytime you load a new level you can pull some data that you want to like stay uh, the same and not reset every time necessarily so you might not be saving too much in too many variables in your game mode it really just depends on what you're doing you might end up saving them in your game instance instead that way when you load a new level you can pull them back up and now you could obviously do that from the blueprint function library too if you want to expand that but those are just some cool options to kind of teach you how to get rolling and how to like handle some data uh, let's just say as a final thing though you can also save you can uh, 
you know you can set so you can say like set total points so you can update stuff from these anywhere too it's very important to understand these game instances once you're learning these game modes and uh, let me know if you have any questions down below. These episodes can be a little tricky to get right. It's kind of why it took so long. You'd be surprised how many times I reshoot these sometimes and then just rewrite them and, and stuff like that to try to make them as good as they can be and as clear as they can be. So I could really use your support and all that good stuff. So leave a like, maybe subscribe. Let me know uh, if there's anything confusing or if you want to see some specific thing next. And also at some point I probably do actually have to make something happen on here. But I think that's less important than understanding the overall main concepts of how to like make everything tie together so uh we'll just take it one step at a time and we'll, we'll take as many episodes as we need all right hope you guys are doing well peace out see you in the next one